Good morning, everybody. This is Brent Watkins Motorsports. These are uh, the pistons for our 465 tunnel port engine that we started a few weeks ago. Um, if you missed that, uh, you can go back several weeks and see how we uh, assembled the cylinder heads and then how we prepped the block. Um, so we have uh, main and rod bearing clearances checked and all we have to do now is uh, file and fit the piston rings and weigh and measure the pistons and uh, balance the crank. So I use a lot of custom pistons. I don't know why it says custom, custom. I guess these are special, custom, custom squared. But um, I use a lot of custom pistons. Race Tech is usually who I go to. Uh, either either those guys or diamond um, but I've been using race tech for for a long long time and the reason we use custom pistons is sometimes we get into situations with these old factory engines where the heads have been cut really bad or uh, you know somebody decided to uh, sink the valves or put a different valve in or, or whatever or the block's been cut um, so there's a lot of um, criteria for that but 99% of my engines use custom pistons so we can see this one is going to be a 22 cc dish uh, 4250 bore size so uh, a factory 427 blocks 4.233 so it's pretty common to just take those 17 over where you can use a common ring pack size uh, another reason why we do a custom is this is a uh, compression height that you don't see a lot for a stroked uh, FE uh, with that bore size so we're using a four and an eighth inch stroke crank and uh, the way the box been cut and and everything we ended up with a 1390 compression height um, 990 big block Chevrolet wrist pin size and uh, there's the uh, the the ring pack that we're going to use probably Hastings rings is is why I'm expecting either that or total seal so let's open this box and see what these custom pistons look like all right so in the envelope is usually the instruction sheet and I can fill the uh, the pin locks got a bunch of junk that we can throw away and we did get some total seal rings yay this pins. And then we've got eight eight pistons so we'll unwrap this i can't do it with one hand and then look and see what these look like all right these things are are just beautiful race tech has really stepped up on on their quality over the past several years just a, a really nice looking piston they laser etch everything so you can see who they were made for So a good ample dish. These are symmetrical valve reliefs, so you don't have to worry about putting these on, on rights and lefts. Got a D-shaped uh, inverted dome, D-shaped volume, D-shaped dish with some pretty big size valve reliefs. one five one five three millimeter piston rings if you see a five thousandths larger piston ring than your bore size they, these are made to be file fit so as our custom i um, going to get these washed and we're going to get everything weighed and measured all right so we've got all of our pistons weighed and uh weighed the wrist pins and locks and bearings and uh our rings we're getting ready to take some measurements and most of your piston manufacturers will tell you where they want you to measure so uh, race tech wants you to measure this one from the very bottom part of the skirt 200 thousandths up and let's see where did I see the 200 thousandths gauge point gauge point gauge point gauge point 200 thousandths so we're gonna measure from the bottom up 200 thousandths and it's going to look something like that so that's where you're going to want to center 
your uh, your andals on your mic. I just do that just to show you guys about how far up you need to go. And um, we're gonna measure all of those and they're gonna, you're gonna wanna measure, make sure that they're somewhere around 247 thousandths. So four inch, 247. And let's see, they should give you a clearance. I should have looked at all this beforehand before I picked up my phone. But essentially, if it's for a 4250 bore and the piston should measure 247, then you're going to want around 3 thousandths clearance. Bingo. So we're going to get all these measured and uh, I'll get right back with you. All right, so here's our measurements. Um, all, all eight were within one ten thousandth of an inch to each other. So I'm gonna, you know what's coming, I wanna step back up on my soapbox. If I hear somebody um, say my shop won't hone a block until they have the pistons in their hands because the pistons vary so much. If I hear that again, uh, I'm gonna file for uh, business dissolution, I guess. Um, this is modern technology, okay? These are modern pistons, CNC made. Uh, everything is, is top notch. So when you buy anything uh, besides an old cast repop piston, you're gonna see um, measurements like this. So two, four, six, five, six, 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 five, 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 five. One ten thousandth of an inch. So if you take your block to a machine shop, you can pretty much take to the bank that you can hone your block to a specific bore size and all the pistons are gonna be dead nuts on. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, again, quality pieces from Racetech, Diamond, Male, CP, um, they're all gonna fall right in there. Um, the weights, you will see this vary. Um, and this is normal, what, what I'm seeing right here, 555.0 with a 7, 556.1. So they're going to vary a little bit, and it takes a whole lot of aluminum removal to even up the uh, the weights. So instead of carbon on the, other, on the undersides with a die grinder or whatever, trying to make them all match up, what I usually do is match, um, I'll write down everything, the weights of everything, and then aim for matching pieces um, to get to get the same uh, piston, wrist pin, little end of the rod weight together. Um, I just don't like grinding and belt sanding on stuff if I don't have to. So while we got our board gauge set to one of these pistons, I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, I'm sorry, while I've got my mic set to one of these pistons, I'm gonna get my board gauge out, zero it on the mic, and then check our uh, piston and cylinder wall clearance. All right, so once you get your board gauge uh, set to your mic, you can check. And we are at about three and a half thousandths. So we go through, check every one, just make sure the machinist didn't um, kill something. About three. It's so hard to look at a at a bore gauge through a camera. So that one's about three and two tenths. You're gonna see some tolerance, a little bit of tolerance stack on some stuff. So just go through, check all of them, make sure everything's up to snuff. And uh, that's a very crucial part to putting an engine together. If it's too tight, you'll scuff the skirts. If it's too loose, probably won't hurt nothing at all. It'll just sound a little rattly. Um, a lot of guys in the 60s used to run seven, eight, nine thousandths piston wall clearance on some of those pistons, and they just sounded like a, a tin can rattling around, but they, they did just fine. So we're in good shape here. I'm gonna check this other side, and I'll get right back with you. And now we got all of our connecting rods laid out and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start snapping these things together. Um, if you wanna see, if you're having trouble with wire locks, which is what these pistons use, I do have a video 
um, on how to do those. If you search through my channel, just use the search uh, button and put in wire lock, you should, should be able to see it. I have a special screwdriver that I've used for years and years and years to do this with, but uh, it does take a little bit to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's like riding a bicycle. Um, so now I'm just gonna get uh, all of these. Um, the method to my madness on averaging all this stuff and sticking to a, a particular weight between the piston and the rod and the wrist pin is probably, I don't know if I can explain it or not, but um, I do that so that I don't have to grind on anything. So essentially, if you average all the weights of the pistons and then average all the weights of the wrist pins and all the uh, your little end weights, you get a good average number that you can add together, uh, which in my scenario comes out to be about 938.3 grams. So as I've got these weighed and laid out, I've got my rods laid out in, in uh, ascending order of weights and I've got my pistons also in ascending order this should have went right there but um, what I can do is I can mix and match parts to get awfully stinking close to 938.3 grams usually I can get within a half gram or so so that would make each rod wrist pin little end wire lock assembly pretty much the same weight. And then I can just give um, my, my balancer uh, a bob weight based off of that. So, and then you don't have to go grinding on your little ends or, or you know, putting them on a belt sander or taking a die grinder to your pistons or whatever. So to me, it's just an easier way to do that. It's more professional. And um, yeah, so now I'm just gonna get uh, wire locks put in. I usually go through, it's just the way that I do it. I'll go through and put a wire lock in each side on one, I'm sorry, put a wire lock on one side of each piston. And then when I go to put my wrist pin in my rod, um, I can just flip it over and not have to worry about the wrist pin falling out and then just put my lock in the other side. So I'm gonna get that done now. Uh, tedious and a little bit time consuming. So no need for you guys to have to watch that. All right, I've got all eight assembled and just a couple of things I'll show you. Uh, make sure that your wire locks are seated and uh, take a look around, make sure that you don't see any um, space in between or, or behind the lock in the groove. If it's a Ford or a Pontiac, when the piston is upright like this, the big chamfer on your rod should be facing towards the right. If it's a Chevrolet, it'll face towards the left. Um, make sure that if you don't have symmetrical valve reliefs that uh, the piston is oriented per cylinder. So on an FE um, number one piston, if the, if the valve reliefs were uh, asymmetrical, the exhaust, the smaller valve relief would be on your right and then the intake will be on your left. Same for the number two piston. On the numbers three and four, it would flip flop. Um, on a small, small block Ford, um, number one has the big uh, relief to the right because it's the intake if it's a asymmetrical piston and that stays the same all the way down the row. And then number five, your exhaust valve relief would be on your left and then it would stay the same all the way down through six seven eight so just a couple things to look out for and i've got a fully assembled piston and rod assembly i can put this in a little storage box to be uh, ready for assembly and now all we have to do is file fit our rings yay i hate it so um on ring gaps that's your second ring Oil rails, top ring. Um, on most street builds, what I aim for is um, uh, four and a half thousandths per inch of bore for the top ring and five thousandths per inch of bore for the second ring. So we're going to use our old, nasty, decrepit 
calculator. So we're going to be at 19 thousandths for the top ring. And 21 for the second ring. So 19 and 21. So I'll get my feeler gauges ready for that. And get my um, ring filer set up for that. And get to work. All right, so you want to make sure and check every single ring, including your oil rails. Um, sometimes oil rails need to be filed too, and we're looking for a minimum of about 15 thousandths of an inch there. So I go through both oil rails, and then I'll go with my top ring and second ring and gap those. Make sure that when, even if you don't file them, go ahead and dress the ends. Take those sharp edges off. And especially if you do file, make sure you dress the ends or you'll leave a burr that can damage your cylinder wall. So I go, um, I even use, after I hit them on my, uh, on my dressing wheel, on my piston filer, I'll take a, like a little wet stone and, and dress the ends as well. Okay, here's the top ring. Sometimes you run into this. It doesn't mean that it's wrong or bad. It just means that you gotta take a little bit more off. So the ring ends overlap a little bit. You just kinda have to get a, a measurement for how much it is. Um, I can make, make them butt, but as you notice, what it takes to do that is this end of the ring is higher than this end of the ring. So, uh, I'll need to take a little bit off to get those even where I can get it down in the cylinder evenly from the top of the, the deck and then gap our 19 thousandths. All right, so we are done with our piston rings and we are basically done with our uh, short block parts. Just need to get uh, the crank balanced and then we can start assembly. The, uh, the cylinder heads are finished. Got the cam, got the lifters um oil pan is here we got a canton oil pan and uh the the intake manifold is the dual single plane tunnel port intake uh, carburetors are being made right now by drew pajednik so we got carburetors coming and we are still waiting on our tnd rockers for the tunnel port so um we'll probably be able to get our short block together and um We'll have to wait a little bit to get our piston and valve clearance checked and that sort of thing. But uh, we are making good progress. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. And thank you for uh, subscribing and commenting and, and all the things that you guys do. I hope you're having a good week and a good weekend. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can take a, a, another airplane flight lesson. We'll see how the weather holds out. But uh, I'll see you next week, Lord willing. Bye.